Hey, Chris Williams, today we're gonna to be talking about how to set up OctoPrint on a Raspberry Pi. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Crazy Will from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up OctoPrint on a Raspberry Pi. So, I recently got an Ender 3, and I did a video on that, you can see that right here. But it's got limited capabilities. You have to use a little micro SD card to put in and out the files. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to control it from your computer? Well, you can, and that's where you can hook a Raspberry Pi, and I'm gonna be setting it up with a Raspberry Pi 3. I was actually running it with a Raspberry Pi 1, which ugh, was not a good idea. It worked, but it was just not fast enough. But today I got a Raspberry Pi 3. I'm gonna set it up for OctoPrint. I figured I'd walk you guys through the process of setting up OctoPrint on your Raspberry Pi so you can control your Ender 3 or any other FDM printer that you would want to control from a web browser. So basically how it works is once you got the Pi hooked up, you actually hook it right into the port that's on the Ender 3 and you load OctoPrint up and you're able to open up a web browser by going to octoprint.local and you can control your 3D printer. This means you could stop it, you could start a print, you could upload files, you can make it wireless if you want. I'm going to be connecting it up with Ethernet because I want a faster connection. Now this only works on your local network, but there is ways with port forwarding which it's up to you guys, I don't recommend it. I personally do it. You can port forward or you can use other services to actually access the Pi remotely so you can check on this stuff from work, which they don't recommend. You gotta do that at your own risk, guys. You know, it is heating up from anywhere from 200 to 260 degrees, so it is potentially a fire hazard. Unfortunately, this does not work for resin 3D printers. They don't have support for that. I've tried it. That's how I got into this. I installed it for my resin printer, which was my Elegumar, and it doesn't work. There's not a way to control the actual resin printer. You can't even make it network, but there is another way to do it with resin printers, and I've covered that in the past, so check out my videos on the Elegu Mars. If you've got a Raspberry Pi and you have an SD card, I recommend a 16 gig on up. We're gonna go over to the computer and we're gonna set this up. All right, so here we are on the computer. The first place you're gonna to wanna to go to is open up a web browser and go to octoprint.org. We're gonna download this, and I highly suggest supporting this project because it's really great. So we're gonna click on download. I am going to be downloading this for Raspberry Pi 3, which they say recommended hardware is anything higher than a Raspberry Pi 3. So we're gonna go ahead and download this. And we'll let that do its thing. Okay, so that's done downloading. We're gonna click on the downloads file, open that up, and we're gonna click on OctoPi. Right there, we're gonna unzip that file. And now we have an image. We're gonna take that image and push it right onto the desktop, just so I know where it is easier. And we'll take that, we don't need that anymore. We can delete that, close that out. And now we're gonna open up a program called Etcher. And this is a free download and I'll leave a link in the description down below. So we're gonna select an image, which is on the desktop, that's where we moved it. I'm gonna open that up, and we're gonna select the media device, which this one selected it automatically. And we just hit flash, and we just let it do its thing. Close this out now, we don't need this anymore. You'll have to remove the drive and then plug it back in to see it because it automatically ejects it, but it should say boot. It looks like OctoPi is all in there and we're gonna expand this just a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna be opening up is OctoPi WPA, this little file right here. So let's open that up with Autonomo. Autonomo, I put the link down in the description below. It's a free application. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down to right here where it says networking. This is your Wi-Fi networking right here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna knock out that pound symbol. We're gonna knock out this pound symbol. We're gonna knock out this pound symbol. All right, and then you're gonna put your SSD here and your password right here. Hello darkness, my old friend. And then you're gonna file save it so I'm gonna do that off camera next thing we're gonna do is we'll close out of this this should be ready we're gonna eject it and we'll bring it over to the Pi okay so this is the Raspberry Pi 3 setup put the chip in we're gonna connect the printer which will connect the printer right over here it uses this little micro USB right to the printer like so I'm gonna try this USB camera, which I did a review on. You can see that right up here. May not work. I don't know if it's one of the recommended one, but I'm gonna plug that in too. I'm gonna connect 
the Ethernet. And then we're just going to connect the power and turn it on. Right, so what we're going to do from here, we have the Pi plugged in, octopi.local. Once you get that, we should get a wizard screen showing you how to control access. Hit next. Now you're going to make a username and password. All right, so after you make a username and password, we're going to keep access controlled enabled. We're going to hit next. All right, so I actually use anonymous tracking. I let them use that. I think that's fine. Enable that. Hit next. Configuration check. Test host. It checked the host. Everything's good. Service is enabled. And we're going to click on enable connectivity check. And then we're going to hit next. I would enable this. It's a blacklist process, and I'd enable that. That's just my preference. I hit enable that so that way there's any blacklisted stuff. You don't get it on your Pi. Hit next. Set up printer profile. I'm going to call mine Ender3. Ender3. And hit next. Shouldn't leave it unattended. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Finish. Bam. We have OctoPrint. That's the interface. You just hit connect. And it should pick up the Pi. Let's see. All right. So status operational. What we'll do is we'll do a quick check. I actually have the webcam on here, but I don't think I have the settings set for the webcam. So, all right. So let's just see if this printer works. For some reason, the web camera is not working. And I could hear it controlling. Yep. And we got control of the printer. So that's working. Okay. So let me show you around real quick. Over here is your username. You can log in, log out. If you click on this, you can shut down the system, reboot the system, restart Octopi, restart in safe mode. Never had to do that yet. If you click on this little tool icon right here, that's your settings. This is where you can get a lot of different features and you can really go into this. The biggest one that you're going to worry about in the beginning is the camera. And for some reason, my camera is not working. I'm trying different things with it. I've been playing with it. It worked on my Raspberry Pi 1, but it's not working with this one. I don't know why. There's all kinds of profiles and things you could do. Biggest thing that I want to show you in here is Plugin Manager. This is probably what you're going to use the most. And this shows you all the plugins that you already have in automatically. And then you could search for more. You can get more. And you can search for one I like is Enclosure. This is a plugin that you can control lights, fans, and stuff like that. I haven't really mastered it yet. I'm just playing around with it, but a lot of plugins. From here, you have your temperature. This is when the blue line's the bed. Right now it's off. And the red line is Extruder. And it tells you the temperature. And this is the actual temperature. You could set it. You can play with all that stuff there. You got controls. For some reason, like I said, my web camera is not working, but you can move and you can hear it. I actually have it moving. I'll set it home or move it around. Cool. Actually, I'm to raise that up because I kind of moved it out of the way. But anyway, you can hear it in the background. Turn on motors, do all kinds of different things here. You actually view the G code from when you're actually printing. You can actually see where your printer head is and what it's doing. And then you got terminal right here if you want to control your terminal for Octopi. I haven't messed with this. I just use regular terminal. But usually I stay on this screen and it tells me how long. All right, so on my desktop here, I have a little ornament thing that I've been printing for my wife because she wants to do ornaments like that. So we'll open up the octopi again it's octopi.local and what we're going to do here is we're going to upload that file i cut it up in cura go to the desktop and we'll grab the mickey g code right there we'll choose that it'll upload right up to it boom there it is and what happens is it's actually on the pi and what we're going to do click on print but you have several options here you can re-download the file you can remove it you could load it and then you could print it i'm just going to go ahead and click on print right here so i'm going to start printing that actual Mickey ornament. And as you can see, it actually has the file name, when it was uploaded, username, how much film it's going to use, which is practically nothing. And it's going to approximately take one hour. But Cura said it was going to take an hour and 25 minutes. So the time on this isn't the greatest. I'm sure there's a plugin. I was researching this plugins, but you could see right here, the bed is already heating up. So you see that line jump right there. And then once the bed gets to 50, then it'll go for the actual extruder. So I'm going to speed this up. <laughs> Now you can hear in the background it's actually off to the races and it's going to get going and start doing its pattern and making the mickey mouse ornament all right so from here you can pause it you can stop you can cancel it you can do all that kind of stuff right here it does take a little time there's a little bit of a lag i just upgraded to a raspberry pi 3 so maybe it's less of a lag you can go to control for some reason the streaming's still not working i gotta figure that out i probably gotta get a different camera but we can view g code and you can actually see it drawing 
so you can see actually see where it's where it is where it's going to the next line it's pretty interesting we'll let that go for it looks like it's going to be about an hour Okay, so we're back. The print is done. I just wanted to show you this really quickly. As you can see, as soon as the print's done, the temperature lowers on the bed, on the nozzle, everything's back down to zero, or not exactly zero, you can see right there. But it's 100% completed, it's done. I'll show you a little screenshot of what it looks like. Went through it really easy. So you can go along right from here and start another print, you know, go down here, upload, and start another print. But yeah, that's basically it. So that's the basic setup of Oxford. Print. I'm really enjoying it. I highly recommend you guys do it. Definitely go with a Raspberry Pi 3 or higher. They say it works with the 4, but it's a little rocky right now as of this time. There's so many plugins. I got another plugin that I was playing with. I think it was called Exclude. I forget, and I'll put it in the description right here. I'm doing little ornaments for my wife. I've been 3D printing ornaments, and I try to do four ornaments at a time. And some of them are very intricate and detailed. Sometimes it'll mess up, especially if the bed's not perfectly level. All the other ornaments are coming out great except for one and with this plug-in I'm able to crop out that ornament and stop printing that one because it's not working and all it's doing is going to screw up the rest of the ornaments and it keeps on going and I don't have to worry about it. So there's lots of different plugins. They also have a stop button that I use. So many plugins. Definitely take a look at some of the plugins. I may do a video on recommended plugins once I play with it enough. Another one that I really like is TP-Link. It actually has a plug-in. I recommended TP-Link plugs a while ago and you can take a look at that here and I actually hooked it up and I made it turn off my office lights because I have a TP link light switch and you can see that video here as well and it's able to turn them on and off or if I want to make a runaway thing like let's say this thing's overheating I can make a detection and the TP link plug can cut it off so I may do a video on that one too showing you how to set it up but it has lots of capabilities it's a lot of fun I like the fact that it's completely wireless I can just transfer my file over to my printer I have another camera on its way today which is just a regular Raspberry Pi camera that I made a little stand for to go right on the edge of the printer because the camera I was working with for some reason this isn't working so I just got a regular little pie camera and that's on its way today and we'll see if that works because I didn't have any luck setting up that camera that's it for me guys make sure you like and subscribe if this helped you in any way and remember you could do anything if you put your mind to it later guys come on you didn't think I really wasn't gonna get that working did you make sure you buy a Raspberry Pi camera or a camera that is compatible that's all I can say you're still here? You haven't clicked on all these videos that I made? Or better yet, like button? Or even better, subscribe button? Just putting it out there.